One thing that's become very clear to us here at Crowden is that in order to achieve the highest level of translations, you're gonna need as much context as possible. Without the right amount of context, the whole process becomes a lot more difficult. So we put a lot of emphasis and focus into providing tools that will provide the linguists and AI with the most context possible. For example, we have the Crowden in Context tool in which you can translate with a live application. We also have things like screen translations that provide all the context with screenshots. But let's dial it back to the most simple scenario where a developer has some resource files and they're adding strings, keys and values to that resource file and they're uploading it for the linguist or AI to translate. Now most of these resource files, the developers have the ability to add the context in there. We can also add of course the context in the Crowdin web editor but frankly this way of providing context isn't used very often and the reason for that is simply it's an additional step in the process. It's a bit of a tedious or time consuming task and this makes sense because the developer needs to go into the code base, figure out the context of the strings they're adding and then add it to the resource files or upload it to crowdin.com. So we've been looking at this problem in detail and we realized that of course the developer is gonna get all the context from the code base anyways. So that means the code base holds all the context needed for all the keys. So what we've done here at Crowdin is we built a tool that's gonna help you with this exact problem. So let's have a look at what that tool is. The tool is called the Context Harvester CLI. This is available in the Crowdin store so you can go and see it just now. It is in beta so it's very experimental, it's early days but you can try it out and just see how it works for you. You. What this tool does, and you can read it from the description here, is it's gonna pull all the keys from your Crowdin project. It's then gonna go through the actual source code for your project, and then using AI, it's gonna determine the context for as many keys as possible. You as the developer can then review all the context that's been added by the AI, update it however you need, and then you can upload it using the tool back into crowdin.com ready for any linguists or AI to use. And one of the main things worth pointing out is that this is going to be an open source tool, so you're gonna be able to see all the code that drives this tool behind the scenes and of course you're gonna be able to configure the tool itself, configure the prompt, configure a lot of the options which we'll see in the demo. So we'll leave a link to the documentation in the description below to go in more detail. I'm gonna keep on the side here as a reference and we're just gonna jump straight into demo to see how this all works. So the two things you're gonna need is first of all you're gonna need a crowd and project. So I've got one here it's just called Harvester Tutorial. I've kept it the absolute default settings. The only thing I've done is I've set the source language to Ukrainian because that's gonna be the project that we're gonna be playing with and I've just added a couple of uh, languages for translations, but you can see there's no sources or anything yet. We're gonna add that later on. The next thing I'll point you towards is just the open source tool that I'm gonna be using for this demo. This is just an iOS app. The project itself doesn't really matter. All we need to know is that there are some strings in here. So let's move this aside and we're just gonna do everything in the terminal. We can see that this is just the open source project here on the right. And the only thing that we need to know is that there is a strings file um, let's enter here. This is how we handle strings on this project. So we can see the keys on the left hand side. We can see the values. We can see there's no context provided. There are some comments here which Crowdin will try to pick up, but generally there's no context provided here. So let's quit out of that and move on with the demo. So the first step here is I'm just gonna add my source string to my project. So I'm just gonna drag over the file, that localizable strings, and it's just gonna import into the sources. And we're just gonna see that this has 81 strings. And if we jump into the strings, we can see that the general context that's added is essentially the key, right? So it doesn't actually provide much context here. You can see if somebody's translating this, that doesn't really provide them with anything additional to the identifier that we already have. So let's try change that. So let's uh, close this back up here. We'll head back over to the documentation and just make sure that we follow the rules. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install the CLI. I've already run this, so I've got it already on my machine. And the next thing I'm gonna do just for the purposes of this demo is I'm just gonna add an alias CH for Crowd and Context Harvester. So I'm just doing that just so I don't have to type in this every time just to speed up the demo a bit. So I'm just gonna type in CH and we're just gonna see what it does. So the first thing it's gonna do is just run the help command and that's just going to display how to use it. It's going to display all the different options, all the different configurations. So we can see here at the bottom, there is a configure or init command. We'll use that in a moment. Um, the harvest or extract, this is the one that's actually going to pull out the context from our code base. Upload, which is going to upload the context once we're ready with it. And then you can use things like reset to remove context. This is useful if you're doing things in CI and you want to automate all this. But we're going to start off with the configure tool. So I'm just going to run uh, configure. This is the first command that you should be using. And one additional note is I've already set up the crowding token and open API environment variable. So it's not gonna ask me for those. If you don't have those set up, it will ask you for them. Of course, I wanna keep them hidden for the purposes of this demo. But what the configure command is gonna do is it's gonna take you through a series of questions and then it's essentially going to generate the query that you need to do the harvesting. So I'm gonna go through all these just to show you how this works and see the output that it gives you. But I already have the command I'm gonna use uh, hidden away. So we'll just use this as kind of a, a bit of a playground demo. So which project do you use? I'm gonna use crowding.com. 
Chrome. Next thing, uh, I'm gonna pick the project. Uh, AI providers, of course, you can change to different providers. Let's stick with OpenAI. Um, you have the different models. Eventually, I'm going to go with uh, GPT-4, but let's just pick the default there. I'm just telling it here that I want to use the keys in the code. So let's just stick with that default option. You can customize the prompt file. So you can customize the uh, the different prompts that get sent to the AI model. All this is going to be in the documentation, so I won't go into too much details. But again, if you scroll down in the documentation, it, it shows you here. Here's the default prompt, and here's how you override it. So let's just hit enter there. Then next up, you're going to tell your tool where to find all the relevant files. So these are all the files that it's going to use for the context that's the local files these are the ones to ignore things like node modules hidden directories etc you can just ignore these ones and then you have the crowding file so where are the actual translations the keys uh, kept so that way it can take the keys and then you have the crowding query language so you can add additional filtering logic using the crowding query language again in this case i'm just going to keep that empty and i think one of the final things is where do you want the output so you can do a dry run here on the terminal i'm going to pick a csv and then it's just going to be the default csv file so now that i've run that command it basically gives you the final command that you can run and actually try the the harvesting so in my case here i already have one prepared so i'll just paste it here so we're just running the harvest command i've got my project uh, openai gpt4 in my case i'm going to be looking at all swift files so these are all the files that are going to be providing the context I'm going to ignore the string files, which is basically my uh, localization file. And then I'm explicitly saying for the localization files, just look for anything uh, dot strings. And then we have the output. In this case, it's going to be the CSV. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit enter here. And what it's first going to do is it's going to pick up all the keys for our translations. And then it's going to go through the source code and essentially try to find the keys inside the files and try to determine the context from all that. This can take up to a few minutes. So I'm just going to let that run and come back when it's done. So that's it, finished harvesting. Now we can see that we have 44 strings saved. And just before we look at that, we can just have a look at the logs above and we can just see that in certain files, it finds a few strings. So in this case, it found a couple of strings and it can generate context for one of those strings. So let's have a look at the CSV. What it generates is basically, it's got the IDs, the keys, the actual text. And then if you scroll on the right here, we have the initial context, which is the one that we could see earlier on. But now it's added this new AI context piece here. And we can see that for these strings, it's providing definitely a bit more context than the one here. So it appears as an accessible label for checkmark view component. That's a lot better than this uh, key that we have just here. One thing definitely worth noting at this point, of course, this generated 44 strings as opposed to the full 81 that we had. This is using AI, it is using LLMs to try determine the context. So it's not always gonna be 100% accurate. And and it's not going to be able to determine the context for every single string. So this is where we get into the world of prompt engineering. And this is what AI is all about. It's not always going to give you the most uh, deterministic results. But if you can adjust the prompt to suit your needs, you can definitely kind of sway the results uh, to your favor. So now that the file is generated, uh, I'm just going to clear that. We can see that we have the crowding context CSV. We can now use the ch uh, upload command, and I'm just going to pass it in the project that I'm using. And we can see that the context has been uploaded to the crowding project. So if I open this up, head back into our strings and just refresh the page, now we can immediately see there's the new context there that's been added. So if we open this up, we can see the existing context that was there beforehand, and we can see the AI context, and this is just a lot better. So before, you wouldn't know what this really means. But now with the additional AI context, you can see here, used to signify the action to close the action sheet. So this has just been generated by AI using the Harvester tool. So there you have it. That is the new context Harvester tool. Again, still in beta. Try it out, see what you think. We don't think we've seen anyone else in the industry using AI to solve a problem like this. So we're very excited about this. And we're excited about not only the amount of time that this can help save, but also about how much additional quality this can help provide. If you have any further questions, you can leave them in the comments below or get in touch. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good day and I will see you in the next one.